recent rate rise still worrisome for many investors. The U.S. 10-year Treasury yield now around that 3.2 percent level after starting the year closer to 2.4. Big jump. Let's bring in former Federal Reserve Vice Chairman Alan Blinder, now Professor of Economics and Public Affairs at Princeton University. Nice to see you. So I, I was thinking nice to back here. to 1994, Alan. Last time we really saw a scary, <laughs> turbulent yield spike. You were either in the Clinton administration or vice chair at the Fed. Which one? Correct. Uh, both. I was there in that transition. The early grousing, I was in the Clinton administration. Then I joined the Fed in time to hear the rest of the grousing from the bond market. <laughs> so, so you were clearly in, in a place of leadership. What can you tell us about then and now? Similarities, differences, as we all try to figure out where this bond sell-off goes? Well, there's a kind of a similarity in that uh, if you go back to 94, indeed you can go back to 93, Alan Greenspan, then the Fed chairman, started to drop subtle and then not so subtle hints that interest rates were extraordinarily low and they had to go up short-term interest rates, which the Fed controlled. And the bond market just didn't listen. And when they finally started to move up in February 94, there was shock in the Humphrey Bogart, Claude Rain sense. Like, where did this come from? How could you surprise us like this? If you go to today, the Fed's been raising interest rates very gradually for some time. And as you know, and as your uh, viewers know, uh, the long end just doesn't want to go up. The, you know, the Fed usually feels that it raises the short end and the long end follows, maybe not very long after, but that didn't happen this time. So that was kind of a surprise to the Fed. It wanted the long rate to go up. It's trying to put a little bit of a damper on the economy, not too big. That's the trick of getting a soft landing, but a little bit of a damper. And the fact that the long rates until recently just didn't want to move was acting against that. So, so what's the takeaway, Alan, and the, the great bond massacre of 1994, as it's called? What do you tell equity investors who might be worried about the spillover effect on the economy and the markets? Well, I think for the first obvious point is that they're not wrong in thinking that lower long rates, other things equal, are bad for equity prices. That's, that was true then. It was, it's true now. It's true forever. It's almost a total, not quite but it's almost a tautology. Um, the key thing, however, to watch, and market people, I think, understand this, is will the Fed succeed, or maybe I should say, how well will the Fed succeed in achieving the elusive soft landing? The Fed, unlike some other times in history, is not trying to drive the economy into recession. It's watching and waiting, proceeding cautiously. By the way, the current yield curve slope it's, it's steepened a lot lately, and that's gotten all the attention. It's historically normal, something around the 100 basis points between Fed funds and the 10-year bond rate is very, very normal historically. So if you're sitting at the Fed, you're not viewing this as a very steep yield curve. You are viewing the old one as a very flat yield curve, of course. Alan, um, just to extend uh, the 90s uh, analogy a little bit, uh, you've kind of taken us through and compared it to right now where Fed officials seem to be trying to get the market's attention and focus them on the, the fact they're going to be raising a few more times. But Fed Chairman uh, Jerome Powell has also invoked Alan Greenspan's treatment in the later part of the 90s where he said, look, there's a productivity yes. revolution going on. Maybe we won't have a lot of inflation, and perhaps that means we can go slower on rate increases as the right. cycle matures. Do you think there's relevance uh, to that experience today? I think there's tremendous relevance to that experience today. It was a period of time, but going back to the late 90s, where the labor market tightened, the unemployment rate fell so low that by conventional thinking there should have been a lot of inflation, but there wasn't. And Alan Greenspan had to persuade his colleagues just to hold steady. Let's just see if we get any inflation out of this. And we didn't. We never did. It's not like it was long delayed. And by the time we got it to 95, we were seeing high inflation. No, it never happened. So you go to today, you have a similar thing, although productivity, it sure doesn't, it's not being driven by a productivity miracle, which Greenspan saw early on in the late 90s. Productivity has been lagging, productivity growth, 
and yet there's no inflation, or very little, I, no is a slight exaggeration, inflation is creeping up, but very little acceleration of inflation to be seen despite the unemployment rate, which has now been in the neighborhood of 4% or lately lower for quite a long time. Alan, what do you make of the picture in Europe at the moment? I mean, we see uh, the yield on the Italian 10-year gap up 3% above the, uh, the same uh, for Germany. Do you think that will alter what the ECB can do moving forward? A lot of people, of course, expect the ECB to begin to start to tighten uh, policy and raise interest rates. Is this going to be a limiting factor or at least a factor that will make the fallout from rates going up in Europe far worse than they have been in, in the U.S.? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that latter because, as you say, the Italian rates have already gone up. But, but yes, I think this certainly has to be a factor that will be a little bit of restraining influence on the ECB. You know, you remember go back to 2012 when Mario Draghi, with words only, basically completely annihilated the yield spreads between Italian, Spanish, etc. bonds and German bonds. I mean, drove it practically to nothing. Now you have this large spread. I don't know if he's planning another verbal attack on the uh, spread, but this looks, you know, to an outsider, this looks more country specific than Eurozone wide. The Eurozone yeah. as a whole doesn't look so, you know, doesn't look terrible. I think the Italian, you know, the credibility of uh, what the Italians are saying and doing about their budget is somewhat questionable. And that's that's playing a role. But, but to your question, sure, that has to be something that the uh, ECB takes into account as it plans its next few steps. Finally, Alan, just on, on our top story, which is this rise in bond yields, when does it start impacting the economy? From a perspective of higher mortgage rates and consumer loans and small business loans, is there a level or a speed? And are we already at that point? Uh, I don't think there's a magic number, and I don't think we're quite at the point, but it will come soon. Uh, there's probably a lag of a quarter, two quarters, three quarters before uh, the market bond rates uh, filter in to fully, fully filter in. I mean, they start right away, but fully filter in, fill, uh, sorry, filter in to the interest rates paid by households for um, mortgages for auto loans and for uh, businesses in bank loans and things like that. So a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit ahead in the future, but not so very far ahead.